Hello, dear friends. Today is December 26th, also called Boxing Day, a day to relax, regroup, or for some of us, to simply breathe a sigh of relief after weeks of Christmas preparation. Lambrick's leaders have chosen, I think wisely, not to have an in-person or live stream worship service today. So please be assured that this is not a sermon, but rather a short reflective meditation, if you will, as a kind of finale to our Advent series on Christmas carols. Some of you know that my family and I lived in Austria for several years. And so a particular carol has extra special meaning for us because it was written and composed just a stone's throw from our house. I'll bet you can guess which one it is. Stille Nacht, Silent Night. You may already know some of the backstory to this beloved carol. In 1816, an Austrian pastor named Josef Mohr reflected one winter's evening and penned his now famous words. It may well have remained in his private papers, but something happened just two years later in the nearby village of Oberndorf, not far from Salzburg. The Zalzak River had burst through its banks, and the floodwaters evidently had damaged the church's organ. What to do? What to do? No pipe organ, no choir, no song. Josef Mohr hurriedly went to his musician friend, Franz Gruber, and asked him if he could compose something simple for guitar and voice to accompany his lyrics. And could he do it in a rush, since a midnight service was fast approaching? Well, Gruber did it, and we now have the most translated Christmas carol in history, presently in about 140 world languages. If you recall, three weeks ago, Scott helped guide us through O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and he reminded us that it is by far, by far, the oldest Advent carol we have. I couldn't help but thinking of that children's Sunday school chorus, Deep and wide, O come, O come, Emmanuel, going deep, and silent night, going wide. But why? Why did Josef Mohr write his poem at all? Context is everything, and he penned his words shortly after the Napoleonic Wars had devastated Europe and beyond. Austria, like many other places, was reeling from the ravages and havoc that long wars always wreak. Farms and villages and commerce and relationships all needed radical healing and restoration. And so, when Joseph Moore stepped out into that crisp and clear alpine winter's night, he was struck by two things, silence and light, and their possibility of actual hope and peace. Silence and light. So let's very briefly look at our carol and also reflect on our own circumstances right now. A very basic but an important question, who is Silent Night addressing, speaking to? And just who is doing the speaking or singing? If you notice, our carol is in two voices, two perspectives, information about the baby Jesus and soothing words to the baby Jesus. Part of our carol sets the scene, who is present, and their role. 
and part is talking to the infant Jesus himself, thy holy face, thy birth. Each verse, as you know, begins with silent night, or in German, stille Nacht, same meaning. This phrase, repeated as all three verses begin, sets the tone, sets a mood for the carol. And silence, it can be a double-edged thing, can't it? After all, a cold silence in a marriage is anything but comfortable. A response of internet silence when one is pursuing a solution to a problem is frustrating. And silence can be interpreted in all sorts of misguided ways, can't it? But in our carol, silence is a soothing thing. It's a cocooning thing. It's a warming thing, even on a cold winter's evening. Not that it is at all passive or bland. Instead, our car in our carol, silence is a blessing that we give to the Christ child and a blessing from which we ourselves benefit sleep in heavenly peace. And there are other words in our carol that convey silence, <clears throat> or at least a sense of peaceful settledness. Holy infant, so tender and mild. Christ the Savior is born, redeeming grace. These phrases are not combative. They're not polarizing. They're not even that grand in scope. Instead, by using these phrases, Conveying silence and calm, Joseph Moore reminds us yet again that when Jesus first came in Bethlehem, and as the Gospels unfold the story, he did not arrive as a conquering hero, or in the capital city, or even in a clean maternity ward. Instead, he came in a weirdly unexpected, silent but calm way. Silence. But in our carol, we can't help but notice the motif of light, light, light. Yes, all is calm, but all is bright. Glories stream from heaven afar. And can you imagine Joseph, Mo Joseph Moore's view of the stars and the cascades in his own pre-industrial, uncluttered, clear alpine night sky? As he imagined the Christ child's first coming in Bethlehem. And later in the carol, we sing love's pure light. And with the dawn of redeeming grace. Yes, Silent Night is a warm and fuzzy, even perhaps a predictable carol. Many of us can sing it without printed out words because we frankly know it so well. It has no sharp edges to make us shrink or cringe but it still remains a wondrously cutting edge carol for us in late 2021. And it has no sniff at all of mere sentimentality or seasonal shelf life. Tell me, as the season of Advent and now the celebration of Christmas is concluded for another year, what will you do with December 26th, 27th, 28th and onwards. Are we just now plodding our way along, enduring a cold and wet winter season until punctuations like Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day lift our spirits? Hmm? Oh, dear friends, let's learn from Joseph Moore, who himself lived in politically and economically troublesome times, and yet, and yet reveled in the silence and light presented in his own night sky and his reckoning of the biblical reality of Jesus coming. And go figure, we still get to reflect his perspective in the singing of the most widely translated Christmas carol. So let's learn from our beloved Christmas carol that light is just dawning upon us and there are further discoveries for us in the light ahead. So, in our own season of COVID preparedness and economic adjustment, and creatively practicing plain old neighborliness, not much different from Joseph Moore's situation in 1816, let's be eager to hear and respond to our rescuing God through the silence and through the light 
that he fosters in and through us in new and unexpected ways. Oh, dear ones, be encouraged. Christ the Savior is born. And so as we close, by the tender mercy of our God, love has broken upon us. Light is given where once there was darkness and hope where there was only death. And so now go into your real world, knowing that God will guide your feet into the way of peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, and remain with you always. Amen.